So, of course, the second reading today presents a very, presents a very famous passage of the writings of Paul, or the earliest we have in the New Testament, and uh, scholars believe that he's incorporated here a very early Christian hymn about Christ being in the form of God, and emptying himself, pouring himself out, taking the form of a slave, and going even further, becoming obedient even to death, going even further to death on a cross, and therefore God has exalted him and gave him the name above every other name. Lord, not the name Jesus, but Lord, the name Lord. And of course, we've tended to read this over the centuries, you know, wow, look at, look at this incredible, unique person, Jesus, and the amazing thing he did, that so unusual and so irreplaceable and so inimitable. Uh, God and then becoming crucified and dying for us and rising, you know, which is, you know, okay, but that's clearly not Paul's intention. That's not why he's including this in here and what he has to say to the Philippians and what he's saying to us tonight. That's why I'm glad we have the first part of the chapter here as well as in the hymn which begins in verse 5 or 6. Um, he says, you know, if there's any consolation... Uh, have, you know, one mind among you, one heart. Treat others as more important than yourselves. Don't do anything out of vain glory or ambition. And then he begins to him by saying, have this mind in you, which Christ, which was in Christ Jesus himself. Who? And he quotes the hymn. So clearly, Paul's intention is not saying, Oh, worship this amazing, unique, special act that Jesus did for you. He's saying, look at this pattern which you're supposed to follow. This is what Jesus did. He's giving you an example. Have the same mind in you, the same actions in you, which he did. It's not as unique as you think. It's the pattern for all of us. That's the secret for all of us. It's so easy to stand back and worship Jesus in the Spirit, but meanwhile we're called to follow Him and to do as He did. That's the point. It's way easy to worship it, but it's very, way hard to follow it. But that's what Paul is, what Jesus is asking us to do. He's giving us the pattern for our human life. Of course, by His teaching and then by His action, which is commemorated in this early hymn. That as we find ourselves in human condition, and remember, as many have said very well, we're not human beings struggling to become spiritual. We are spiritual beings struggling to become human. Struggling, in other words, to discern and live out the deepest spiritual, if you will, dimensions of our own humanity, as Jesus gave us the example to do. So we're discovering, with and through his grace and his example, what it really means to be human as a son of God, which we're all called to be, by the way, not just humans. We're all called to be in the Son, children of God. As Jesus himself makes clear, and as St. Paul makes clear. So we're called to follow that same example. So what is the example? The example is, well, as, as he says, you know, don't do anything out of ambition, such a bit is to empty yourself, empty yourself of yourself. Empty yourself of your own private, you know, egotistical ambitions and desires and plans and schemes and fears and find liberation in pouring yourself out. Giving to others. Jesus said the Son of Man, all of us sons and daughters of man, all of us humans, with and in Christ, are called to empty ourselves and come not to be served but to serve. He said the Son of Man has not come to be served but to serve to give his life. Not as some unique act that we worship, but as a human act that we follow. So all of us are called to empty ourselves for others. That's the pattern of human life because we're made in the image of God and that's the pattern of divine life. Who? God is always continually emptying himself for the universe, for each one of us, pouring out the spirit of life and love on all of us constantly. As Jesus is always doing, as the saints are always doing. So that's the pattern we're all called to follow. You have to get with the program. 
learn that this is where the secret of happiness lies. Even though it seems to be counterintuitive, we have to pour out our life in order to find it, which of course is exactly what Jesus did say very clearly. Whoever would save his life will, would, will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will, will keep it, will gain it. Well, exactly, exactly. That's the point. So you won't find who you are and who we're called to be. You won't find your life until you give it away. Every day. Jesus did this very dramatically every day and finally very dramatically on the cross. But we're all called to follow that pattern. So when you're called to carry our cross every day and follow me, as Jesus said, that's what it means. That we pour ourselves out. And that's the active sense. That passively, we accept the hard knocks of life mortality of life, the sickness, the sufferings, the betrayals, all the things that Jesus himself suffered, without losing heart, without losing trust in God, without becoming bitter and angry and cynical and vengeful and all that other stuff which is the devil's territory. So that's again the example that he gave us. Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. Here he suffered the most un unjust and excruciating death. And how did he react? Not with anger or bitterness, but, Father, forgive them, and into your hands I commend my spirit. Therefore, the hymn says, God exalted him and gave the name above every other name, because that's he fulfilled as the Son of God, giving us children of God the pattern. He fulfilled what it means to be divine and human, to pour yourself out in love and giving, even when you're being treated badly, especially when you're being treated badly, not repaying uh, evil for evil, but good for evil. That's God's pattern, which Jesus himself said, right? He said, it be perfect like your heavenly Father is perfect, who makes his sun shine on the good and the bad, and makes the rain come down on the just and the unjust. God's mercy has no calculation and no limit, so neither should yours, neither did Jesus' so neither should ours. It's a pattern that we're called to follow. And it's the secret of the universe. That's how God acts. And as children of God, we act in the same way, and therefore we share, we rise with Christ, and live the life of children of God in the presence of the Father. And I guess the point of the Gospel is that it takes us, it takes some hard knocks, it takes some failures on our part, even not just uh, suffering, but by failure, for us to, to understand this. Isn't that the point Jesus is making? Here you have these religious people, the chief priests and the scribes that he's talking to, and he's saying, so you're the ones who said, yes sir, I go into the vineyard, but then you didn't. You were so secure in your own identity, or your own status, your own power as religious figures in society, you didn't really follow the pattern. You got sidetracked with that so so many of us do, including in the church. And these are religious authorities, after all, that he's addressing. Whereas the tax collectors and the sinners and the prostitutes and all the, the addicts and all the prisoners and all those who have failed in life by some standards, society's standards, even by some people's moral standards, they're the ones that get it. They understand that everything is God's pure gift pour it into them. They can't do anything to earn it. They don't have to do anything to earn it. It's just pure gift. And they pour themselves out in gratitude and joy and compassion and love and mercy and pardon the same way. And that's the kingdom of God. They found it. They figured it out. Well, no, they didn't figure it out. They lived it. <laughs> so we better not fall into the same trap. What Jesus is saying really is, as modern writers have said as well, the way down is the way up. The way down into suffering and death and betrayal and all of that is the way up. Therefore, God exalted him and gave the name above every name. It's only when you go down into the depths and the sufferings of life and realize that God's pouring himself out to you right then and there. That's when you get God's boundless mercy, sun and rain on the just and the unjust, the good and the bad. So unless you number yourself among the bad and the sinners and the unjustly treated and the unjust and tax collectors and prostitutes. You won't, you won't get it. But luckily, 
God has arranged it that we all fail at some point. We all have the chance to figure it out. Or just relax, react with hypocrisy and pretense and bitterness and hatred, then, which is where the Pharisees were. The way down is the way up. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Well, there you are. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Now we, now we see how it works. So how can even religious people be seeking money and power and prestige? Haven't they heard anything of the gospel? Have we? Maybe we're too busy worshiping Jesus instead of following him. 